Hi all. In chapter 6, we learned about the processes that somatic cells, or body cells, go through to reproduce. These processes occur often and rapidly during embryological development. Then, after a baby is born, those processes occur among different cells at different rates. Each time the somatic cell cycle turns, two new cells, called daughter cells, are produced. Those two daughter cells are genetically identical to one another and to the original cell that started the cell cycle. That genetic constancy is critical for keeping a body alive and functioning over long periods of time. We know, though, that there is a lot of variation among organisms. There's even quite a bit of variation among the children of a single mother-father pair. This variation among individuals is due to the process of sexual reproduction and the underlying cellular processes of meiosis, the production of gametes, sperm and egg in animals. Many organisms reproduce sexually. Here we see examples of two animals and a plant. Sexual reproduction is defined as the production of offspring through the union of two cells. This occurs in many different forms. Single-celled sperm fertilizing single-celled egg in animals, multicellular pollen fertilizing multicellular ovule in plants, or multicellular filaments fusing together in fungi. In order to produce offspring that have the same number of chromosomes as their parents, 46 chromosomes per cells in humans, 36 chromosomes in hippopotamus cells, the gametes, sperm and egg, each contain half that number, 23 chromosomes in humans, and 18 chromosomes in hippopotamus. But it's not just a random half. Each sperm and egg has exactly one chromosome 1, and one chromosome 2, and one chromosome 3, and one of each of the other chromosomes. That way, when sperm with e one of each chromosome fertilizes egg with one of each chromosome, we end up with a fertilized egg that has two of each chromosome. If the production of either sperm or egg goes off track, we end up with more or fewer than one of any of the chromosomes. We end up with a fertilized egg that has either too many or too few of that chromosome. The karyotype in this picture shows an example. We call this situation trisomy 21 because there are three chromosome 21s instead of two. Trisomy 21 is the most common cause of Down syndrome. Down syndrome is by far the mildest of the situations where there are extra or missing chromosomes in humans. Having a pair of each chromosome is critically important. The process that produces sperm and egg with exactly one of each chromosome is called meiosis. It is the subject of all of the remaining videos of this chapter.